On July 19th to 18 p.m., when I was still working in the office, I received a DM from my friend in America asking if I was there. I was like, sure, I'm busy, but what's up? They asked a particularly weird and specific question. Quote, does ransomware usually cause blue screens? Unquote. This was around July 18th, 11, 18 p.m. Pacific time for Americans. An odd question to be asking at this hour. They then proceed to say our entire nationwide computer system blue screen at the same time. Every PC at work blue screen and won't start. This sounded particularly alarming. If it were simply one or two endpoints, it might not be that bad. But all at once? They then sent me photos of a blue screen. That's when I saw it. The module name was csagent.sys. That is the CrowdStrike Falcon sensor driver. I initially shrugged it off, but then my friend started sending me Reddit posts shortly after every IT admin out there writing their comments in agony. This means this was not an isolated incident, but a large scale one. But let's back this up a little bit. What is CrowdStrike, and what is this CrowdStrike Falcon you speak of? CrowdStrike is a publicly traded security company founded in the United States back in 2011. CrowdStrike is essentially one of the top dogs in the cybersecurity industry. You can see them at major cybersecurity events like Black Hat USA, and they have their own security conference as well. In addition, they also publish many well-respected threat reports every month or so. And how does this relate to our blue screen of death story? Well, CrowdStrike has its own security solution named CrowdStrike Falcon. More specifically, Falcon is a type of EDR, an endpoint detection and response software. If you have never heard of an EDR, think of it as a souped up antivirus for the enterprise world. This enterprise setting also means that no, your computer at home likely does not have CrowdStrike installed. Regardless, an EDR typically focuses on blocking potential threats and logging or blocking suspicious activities before they take place, whilst the regular consumer antivirus focuses on known threats. EDRs are typically more geared towards server settings as well, preventing and detecting attempts like lateral movements before the malware spreads. EDRs tend to be deployed at almost every endpoint of a company, to ensure maximum threat visibility. In addition, to make sure that it works properly and ensure maximum visibility, and make sure that the security solution doesn't get randomly turned off by malware, EDRs tend to run in kernel space, a higher privileged, low level space within the operating system. Having kernel and privilege ensures that a user land process cannot just boot the EDR off the system. Back to CrowdStrike though. CrowdStrike Falcon is typically one of the top five when it comes to the world of EDR. They are generally good at what they do, and is generally well trusted. And this is where parts of a problem stems from. You see, when you're a well trusted solution, more companies are more inclined to purchase your solution from you. That means more companies work with you means more companies will buy your products, which means the EDRs are going to be installed en masse across companies. So if something were to happen to Falcon, every endpoint will be affected. In the third quarter fiscal year 2023 financial results published by CrowdStrike back in November 29, 2022, they reported there were at least 21,146 subscription customers as of October 31st, 2022. Unfortunately, we do not know how many endpoints that translates to, but it is likely that there are at least more than that number of computers that have CrowdStrike installed. And remember how I said earlier, most companies have almost the entirety of their company covered in the EDR solution? Yeah, that means many, many more endpoints will be effective if something goes wrong, which it did. On the night of July 18th in America, endpoints across the world started reporting widespread cases of blue screen of death with the stop code citing the module responsible was csagent.sys, which as we previously established, is the driver responsible for the CrowdStrike Falcon sensor. If it were a one-off blue screen, it wouldn't have been such a big deal. However, this blue screen occurs every time during the loading process of Falcon, meaning something was preventing Falcon from booting properly. And since the EDR operates as a driver, Windows cannot continue to operate if it fails, resulting in a blue screen. The initial reports and workarounds suggested deleting the file that begins with c 00000291 dash under the Windows directory system32 drivers slash CrowdStrike. 
Uh, put a pin on that file, we'll come back to it later. Since Windows cannot be booted when a faulty driver cannot start, this means a manual intervention from IT staff will have to manually boot into save mode to delete this file. There is no easy way to fix this at scale. This can get even worse if your company complies with security practices that requires data encryption to be enabled, such as the usage of BitLocker. This means the IT staff will not only have to be physically present to delete the file, they will also need to know and painstakingly enter the recovery key to unlock the drive in order to reach safe mode. The fallout results in many airlines being grounded, transportation and delivery services cannot operate as normal, banking services disrupted, healthcare facilities and appointments delayed, and much more worldwide. This was compounded by the fact that Microsoft's Azure service was already having issue a mere day ago, though the two are not related to each other as far as we know. But what really happened? Was it a nefarious supply chain attack? Was it done by a malicious actor? Was it sheer incompetence from CrowdStrike? Let's take a look at this technical write-up from CrowdStrike issued earlier. The files stored under that directory contains what are known as channel files for the Falcon sensor. These are part of a protection mechanism configuration used by the EDR. The channel file responsible for the event is the one suffixed with 291. Now, although the file suffixed with an SYS extension is not a driver file, it is not the module that caused the crash. The actual crash happened within the CrowdStrike Falcon sensor module mentioned earlier. While CrowdStrike has only claimed that the configuration update triggered a logic error, it is likely that something within the parsing of the channel file caused the sensor to freak out. This part will likely never be figured out unless CrowdStrike issues a clear statement, as most EDRs tend to obfuscate the binaries, which makes root cause analysis as outsiders a lot more difficult. What we do know, however, is that the channel update file is specifically addressing quote-unquote newly observed malicious name pipes. Which leads us to the next part of the story. While we do not have any concrete confirmation what this is referring to, let's shift our focus to Cobalt Strike, an infamous post-exploitation toolkit. Think of it as a toolbox that bad guys can use after infiltrating company. The legitimate penetration testing companies do use it as well. Despite the similarity in names, Cobalt Strike and CrowdStrike are completely unrelated to each other. The details of Cobalt Strike itself are not relevant, but long story short, Cobalt Strike contains many components, with the primary part being the backdoor, commonly referred to as a beacon. Three days ago, Cobalt Strike released a new feature called PostX Kit, which just so happened to include a new way to execute arbitrary code within the beacon, which accepts an argument whose parameter value is sent over a name pipe. A name pipe can be thought of as a mailbox that processes can write and read to, essentially a communication portal between two processors or devices. Whilst name pipe is something that almost anything and everything uses, malicious programs or not, the timing is simply too convenient for both posts to be referring to them days within each other. Which likely means this CrowdStrike update was specifically made to address Cobalt Strike, which missed the mark and somehow struck the entire planet instead. Whilst it is unfortunate that this happened to CrowdStrike and all of their clients involved, it is important to remember that someone out there did this not out of malicious intent, but likely a massive oopsie. That said, there is a lot that can go wrong with developing drivers in general. It is oftentimes not as simple as how come you didn't catch this in staging, because if it were, they likely would have done it ages ago considering the maturity of their product. Before I wrap up the video, however, I'd like to address some common misconceptions I saw during the event. First of all, was Microsoft at fault? Does this relate to the Azure outage? No, as far as we know, this incident was on CrowdStrike and CrowdStrike alone. This is unrelated to the Azure outage that occurred a day ago, or at least according to both parties. The second one is less of a question, but a statement, which goes something like, oh, I'm glad I'm, us I'm using Linux. Uh, Linux would never have this problem, right? The thing is, most EDRs have agents available for all kinds of platforms and architectures, with almost every one of them running as the utmost privilege to prevent being overridden by a malicious actor. In the case of CrowdStrike Falcon, they have agents available for Windows, Linux, and macOS. On Linux, Falcon and many EDRs run as root, and with some additional kernel drivers as well. In fact, you can still find kernel panic incidents related to Falcon as recent as of a month ago on ICO forum. So no, something like this does not necessarily make your operating system of choice any better. A company shouldn't have this level of control on my system. Shouldn't this be considered spyware? 
Well, EDRs require a kernel level privilege to see, monitor, and block threats on your system before or as they are happening. Without this level of access, EDRs can easily be turned off by the malicious actors. While this is not saying that kernel level EDRs cannot be defeated, it makes the threat actor's job a lot harder, and oftentimes easier to detect before they are able to make such a move. This is similar to the anti-cheat discussion we have previously discussed on this channel. Most EDRs do not collect any sensitive information, and they only really collect the necessities. More data would just clog up the storage and simply be asking for more trouble. And that's about it. Um, follow me on Twitter or something if you want to learn more.